because it was well known that any child that was so abused to be used in child pornography would be suffering from this dissociative disorder. This, dis this disorder is a, um, a prime basis for mind control, as had been learned through the Hitler Himmler studies on multi-generationally abused children. In the early 60s, Project Paperclip was in full swing. The Nazi and fascist scientists had been imported into the United States, were put into key positions, and information was gleaned from them on what Adolf Hitler was using as mind control in Nazi Germany. This project paperclip that brought the information in was being taken in by the CIA and a criminal faction of the government that was very much interested in how to control the mind of individuals as well as control um, the minds of a population more so than had occurred in Nazi Germany because those people had actually... Um, broke free of the Hitler plan to be, with the war, but yet the war was so traumatizing that it still left them unable to think for themselves to the point where they became socially engineered. So there's a great deal inf of information that was being brought into this country regarding the effects of trauma on the human mind. A local politician that was sanctioning this um, child pornography ring was associated with my grandfather's Blue Masonic Lodge. Blue Masonic Lodge oftentimes has key individuals within a community who are involved in politics or um, in this particular case it was quite a, a criminal faction of, of politics and, and businessmen, um, police officers and just other, other local politicians as well. The, when this one particular politician came to my father and told him he could receive immunity from prosecution if he would sell me into MK Ultra Mind Control, my father was thrilled. He, he agreed to sell me into the project and was trained in how to raise me for MK Ultra. My father was immediately flown to Boston, Massachusetts, where he was given the information on the language of the subconscious or how to speak to the subconscious mind. And that's NLP, or Neuro Linguistic Programming. Because by that time, the abuse was extensive to the point where when um, extreme trauma occurs in certain situations, such as like when a person is in an automobile accident, you may have heard stories where they had a near-death experience and it was as though their spirit were, were above everything and looking down on the event um, from, from a, a high up position. It's as though the spirit takes flight from the body in order to escape the pain and, and there's like an overview of it. And within that overview, very oftentimes after people survive, they can recall very key events that have occurred around their accident, such as other license plate numbers, or maybe even something more on a spiritual level where they feel love energy of someone who is, who is praying. There are many different aspects that people come back and report from this, this higher up view of when an extreme near death trauma has occurred to the point where their, their spirit had, had left and then, then reattaches. And when it comes back, there is that, that photographic memory surrounding the trauma as well. These are natural phenomena that are associated with the human body that was well known by those who were studying MK Ultra Mind Control. They knew that even though I was compartmentalizing memory of my abuse so that the rest of my mind could function normally as though nothing had happened, 
For example, when my father would sexually abuse me, I wouldn't think of it was when I was in other situations. I couldn't think to bring it to mind. And they thought, what better place to store government secrets than in the, the brain of someone who can't think to bring that information to mind? And yet, at the same time, because of the extreme trauma that was going on, my brain was also photogra photographically recording events surrounding that trauma. So within that compartment of my brain was also a photographic memory. And the government was very much interested in that aspect of the phenomena of the effects of trauma on the human mind. They were also interested in what Mark has mentioned about the, when a person develops 44 times visual acuity. And I developed that as well. It's as though a person gets eyes in the back of their head. You know, my eyes were wide open. You could see whites all the way around my eyes, just so traumatized. And as though I was looking to see the trauma before it came again, before it happened again. And it's kind of like developing eyes in the back of the head. The senses become extremely super heightened, like the way um, perhaps a blind person would develop uh, better hearing. And since I was not able to consciously comprehend what was happening to me, my senses were increasing dramatically. My hearing was very acute as well. And I could hear things that were going on in the, in the next room because the hearing is heightened to that extent. It's a defense mechanism that automatically goes on in, in, the, in the brain when, when trauma is occurring. Additionally, this kind of sensing goes into an area that gives a like a psychic per perception, I, and I hesitate to use the word psychic because it's, it, it's been misused in, in many, many ways. But nevertheless, it, it, the hearing is so acute and the visual is so acute and the senses are so heightened that there becomes a stronger knowing. And the government did numerous studies into the psychic abilities of people who were also abused. These all were adding up into reasons why there was a faction of our government that was looking into what the Hitler-Himmler studies had revealed. Additionally, when a per person compartmentalizes memory, after so many compartments develop, there's no continuity of thought. There's no memory of what happened before. So when a person's out and around and, and they don't think to bring to mind the abuse, they don't know what time has passed. So after a while, there's no comprehension of time. There's no ability to consciously comprehend what's going on, and there's no continuity of thought. Without this kind of a conscious awareness, it leaves the subconscious mind open to be led. A person becomes highly suggestible. Any person who's experienced sexual abuse, especially prior to the age of five, or physical abuse, or even psychological abuse prior to the age of five, would develop this kind of a heightened suggestibility. It's well known that when trauma occurs, people become highly suggestible. When traumas occur in our society, such as what happened 9-1-1, this, many people in this country, PTSD, they develop post-traumatic stress disorder. This PTSD left people unable to think clearly for themselves. They were very fearful. They were very emotionally distraught over what had happened. And when they're not able to think clearly for themselves, they're more easily led. So when they're told what to do by the television while those horrible images are played over and over and over again, they become compliant, they become apathetical, and they become so easily led that America began to lose some of its strength to the point where the criminals that have been in control now 
for numerous generations took a significant step forward in their control.